what's good with the YouTube? Y'all already know Big Blocko from a convict's perspective. And I'm smashing, dashing, sliding on through a little bit of energy. And as you can tell by the title, we're going to do a response video in regards to Gunner's videos. Um, the one he dropped today, which was about the North Daniel movement. Is it pretty much does it still exist or is it dying? And uh, it was a pretty good video, man, to be honest with you. I agree with a lot of points that he was making. Um, but I think that there's a little bit more to it. Um, I'll let Rojo elaborate real quick, and then I'm going to jump in. And what I think, man, this is my this is this is my honest opinion. Nowadays, it's a different generation. The generations have become a little more independent, meaning they don't necessarily want people to tell them what to do and have to give up things and have to whoop de whoop de whoop. However, as far as dying, I would say definitely not because a lot of people are focused on hip hop and stuff and, and the Northern guys are making a lot of noise. There's so many Northern rappers out there encouraging the next generation. They're flossing with vehicles and whoop de whoop and doing all their things, looking fresh, promoting the word. Not necessarily, they're not out there, like there's not no GUN CDs nowadays, but still the message is getting across to a lot of youngsters. And right now in society, the hip hop culture is huge for some reason as far as what people want to emulate so do i think it's dying not at all i think it's just evolving into something a little different than it has been in say minor year times when we were late teenagers early 20s striving yeah see society's evolved in general what happened 40 years ago is not going to be happening today and so there's a couple of key factors and key components that you have to really look at this in the 80s and 90s Yes, there was North Daniels behind the wall, but there was a lot less prisons. The numbers of Sudanios and North Daniels were not as, you know, in, in abundance as there is today. Like Gunnar said today, the 90s, the shockwave of, of colors and other movies started to influence the gang culture. Gangs started being a popular trend. With that became more crime. They became more harsher and started sending individuals to prison that normally would have been to go to prison in the early 90s and late 80s. So now you have a whole mass of people. You have a movement. You have the creation of SMY. You gave people the options out. So that's the creation. The, the movement's always going to be there um, in general. You know, currently there's different sides to it. You've got the Fed side where they're still acknowledging insoldados as bros. you got the state side, which you only have C's and North Daniels. It's a little bit different, um, depending on which, which side you align with. Um, but the movement, man, to see the prince, the core principles, I bet you the bylaws, the uh, introduction to a uh, North Daniel is all going to be the same. Nothing's changed in all the years I was active. What was being said in 84 was still the same in, in 2007. It's just certain things have to change. You have to adapt to your environment. You have to adapt to your circumstances. Yes, there's more dropouts. Yes, there's more degenerates. Of course. You know I mean, that was self-created, you know, by administration and by our own. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing that we have to realize. If, if they're about the gente, about the people, you have to adapt change because apparently it's not working if you continue to have people dropping out. You gotta put you gotta put stumbling blocks to where you don't have anything that wanna fucking drop out. I read a court case, Santa Clara County, and uh they had all kinds of new rules and stuff. You know, uh, part of the rules were it wasn't mandatory if you had if you wanted to hold a piece or not or 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 material. You had to let the household know if you were capable or not. So at least now they're giving people the options if you wanna be that deeply involved. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it was also said, if your house gets rushed and you have hot paperwork, you have to do everything within your fucking means to make sure you get rid of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we've all, you know, I hate to say we, because I'm talking in past tense, but so so if I, if I do that, viewers, please, please uh, understand where I'm getting at. The thing is, is we, they've always been their worst enemy. We've always created more obstacles by the way we operate. The same things that we consider security procedures that are good, those used to only be applied by hermanos and bros and so forth, to whereas North Indians could just do what they wanted to do. If they went back to the old ways a little bit and just let North Daniels be North Daniels, you know, represent the household, we'd know what time it is if we're on a yard with oppositions. There'd be a whole different direction. But in some senses, you got to take this in consideration. The movement has changed. The movement of the beliefs of what it used to be about was we wouldn't be coexisting with no M and the R. We wouldn't coexist with no AB. These things have been acceptable. Therefore, there's no really struggle 
except for the struggle you create within your own. Exactly. Having those oppositions, the Sudanians outnumbering you and the NLRs and all those cats on those yards and having those threats is what enabled the Norteños to be who they were. <clears throat> you know what I've noticed, man, is with the, the straight emergence of, of SNY groups, the SNY yards, CDC was smart. They were very smart yeah. in doing that because it disrupted everybody because back in my time and, and, and way before all the way back to when this stuff first started, if you dropped out, if you were a target, if you asked ask administration for protection, you were basically still in a shoe program type setting. You weren't going, there was no yard for you to go to because you were a target everywhere. They didn't have yeah. places to go where you could be, you know, not worried about getting hit. Now there's more SNY yards than there are GP yards by yeah. a considerable amount. And so it allows people to basically take easy way out, man. I know a lot of them people that have gone to these SNY yards, they've never even seen a level four, a level three. They're coming straight no, from the county that. jail, the county jail to the pen talking about, I'm not active, I'm, I'm, I'm a dropout. You were never a drop in. In my time, there'd only be a handful and they would, yeah. they'd be in one little part. They'd still have an indeterminate shoe. You know what I mean? They had just started that transitional housing or whatever they called it in Pelican Bay. Well, it was a process, man. You had to go, you had to sell up with an opposition. You know, you had to sell up with the Sereno or, or a, a Aryan Brotherhood or a Nazi lowrider for like six months and go through a program and go to classes and things of that nature. And then you go to like a, 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 a level four yard, even if you only got level one points where you have to show that you could program with, you know, what was historically your opposition. Nowadays, people show up in R&R. &R, they don't want to do no burpees. They ain't trying to put in no work. They just tell them I'm a dropout. No, no, you're not. You're just, you're a civilian, really, man. You know, you're basically a civilian that doesn't want anything to do with any see, rules or regulations. See, when, when I was first going into the county jail, you had all age brackets. You didn't have no deep youngsters like you do now. Now they're all youngsters down the system too, though, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's where the numbers have it, it, it have gone up so much, bro. And if you really think about it, man, like you don't see the, those OGs in their 50s. Big old bro shots, tap yeah. down, nothing like that. You're lucky to see actives that are past 45. Yeah. And that's the truth of it. During our time era, we would see these old timers. It would be spread out from all different ages, you know? It was now you go to a block in some of these county jails, that whole block is about 30 youngsters that are under 30 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I was the youngest person everywhere I went for the first five years of going to prison. I was, yeah, so I it, was all, it was all people minding your age now. Okay, okay. I wonder what they're doing with the educational though now, if it's still the same. I, you know, because think about it. The, there was a difference between an NR member and a northerner. Or, or Norteño Soldado in, in a Northerner. A Northerner could be taught the basic principles of the movement, but he was not a part of the movement, bro. People forget that. The ones that were obligated to the movement were those that were bros that took that step, even afterwards. You know, the way that we used to teach the Northerners at that time when they had the changes was, look, the difference between an En Soldado and a Northerner is this. The En Soldado is obligated to this movement. He's a part of it. The Northerner is aligned to it. He follows under its dictates of authority. So basically, you're held accountable. You can hold positions, um, you can practice the bonds, you can enforce them, and so forth. Just one has more obligations. So now, if they done, if they got rid of all that, that they're all North Daniels, how do you, how do you have a, a? Is it just a whole movement for everybody now, or is it change? You get what I'm saying? Because before yeah, it was different, there was different, there was different layers and tiers. You would look at a regular North Daniel, you were a bro. You would look at that North Daniel as an ally. As a North Daniel, you would look at the NF as an ally. It was yeah. all separate. So I'm wondering how they're they're educating them now. So is that enforcing everybody like mandatory education now? That's going to create more and more dropouts or degenerates. You know. I agree. Yeah, I, I I think it has a lot to do with where you end up. Still, you know, just like in our time, if you ended up in a certain pod, you might be writing all day long. If you yeah, end up somewhere else, you might be exercising all day long. If you end up somewhere else, you might have some kickback time. It all depends on who you're with and their agenda and, you know, how gung-ho they are is how gung-ho they're going to expect everybody around them to be because, you know, there's going to be a lot of OGs, the big homies from up north that 
you know, sympathize 100% with the Norteños. They're, they're right there with them. And then there's going to be others. that's like, I'm an F that, that doesn't really have nothing to do with me. It's yep. all about who you're with, where you're at and their mentality, man. You know, as far as what's going to dictate your program, because like me and you've talked about many, many times, everybody's experience can be different. Even if we're sellies, man, you could, somebody could be getting at you. Somebody could be getting at me and we could have be basically in the same environment with a whole different outlook on our time in prison and what, what was expected of us you and could, whether we liked it or didn't like it. You could be getting kites from your the same cell that are coming just for one person sometimes. I used to, I used to have cellies tripped out, bro, because we let them come to me for yeah. my life only. And they'd be like, hey, what, what's going on? Like, they start to get all scared and shit. Like, hey, yeah. what's going on? What are you doing over there? Yeah. Nothing, bro, nothing. You know what I'm saying? They get, hey, people get spooked like that, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've seen it happen. Like, oh, hey, what, what, what's in that wheel? Oh man, I, I can't tell you. Then they're starting to think, man, they are they tripping on me? Shit, why is it still broke? Okay, eh? why is it still broke? You know what I mean? You ever, remember yeah. how we used to fucking put the little marks and stuff? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I got you know. <laughs> people be kind of shady to get all paranoid and shit, man. Hey, that that'll lead to uh like. Uh, inferiority complex, you know, or a superiority complex, either way, you know, because if, like me, I, I got certain information that a lot of people that were way higher than me didn't get, but that was just because it happened to be my job assignment to do things for, you know, you know who, Big Tibbs. And people be like, well, what's going on with that? Well, oh, oh man, I can't tell you. At the time, I'm only a category one, and these are category threes. Like, that's true. I can't tell you, homie. You know, and that, and that makes them think like, God damn, what am I doing wrong with this 21-year-old white kid? <laughs> he knows all the business, but here I am. I've, I've been in it for 30 years, and he won't tell me. I was Xeroxing RC reports, bro. You know what I'm saying? Stuff that was supposed to go to the GAO when I got out that even the other C's that were there didn't have no privilege to see. But because I was going home and everything, they trusted me to, the RC trusted me to Xerox everything. You know what I'm saying? Um. Yeah, people get a little butthurt about things like that, though. No, whenever you're, not, whenever you're not in the know, people want to know. It's like, man, why don't why can't I know? Yeah, you know I mean, you can't make people feel like uh, that's a big problem too. I see sometimes people let their superior superior instincts in themselves showcase to where they want to show like their power and authority, and sometimes they'll they'll bypass other individuals instead of spending that time with them. Yeah, you know what I mean, I've seen it happen on the six yard work. You know, maybe me and some some bees are talking or, you know, maybe it was some other C's talking, whatever the case might be. And somebody will just walk up, be like, hey, what are you guys doing? They'll be like, hey, whoa, whoa, you got to get out of here. Like <laughs> that, that that makes people uncomfortable. But I mean, I get it. it. That's how it has to be, because you don't got nowhere like in these control yards, you know, six yard, wherever, what hole you're in. You can't just be like, all right, we're going to go to that side of the track, you know, and sit down on the bleachers and, and discuss this stuff. Man, you're right there. So everybody feels like it's one big thing, even though there's all kinds of different, man, you're talking about different incidents in whatever prison in the county jails, on the streets with regiments and directives and maybe, you know, doing, putting in some work, it, you know, and it all depends on who you are, what you are, what you're exposed to. And that makes people trip out, man, unnecessarily, though, because that's how it has. That's how business has to be done. You know, the only thing I kind of disagree with Gunner Spill is not every fucking North Daniel was inspired to strive. Not everybody True. was moving forever forward. Let's just keep it 100. There was only a select few that pushed that hard movement. You know what I'm saying? And those yeah. were the ones that got recognized. Those were the ones that got put in position. Because if everybody was striving in that movement, you wouldn't have all the fucking bullshit that it always occurs. You wouldn't have people, def uh, you know, defected or not want to be a part of this. So that's the only part that I really didn't agree with. There was those that were striving. You know, when you get in positions to where it's homeboys and you guys put it down, yeah, you feel good about yourself, especially when you're outnumbered, you know what I mean? Um, but other than that, he didn't do a bad job on it. He did a pretty good job. Hey, I'll tell you what, man, a lot of times when I had positions of power, you know, especially after, you know, I made it to the top, I'd go places and I could tell people were, were real leery to be themselves around me. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the North Daniels, for example, man, they weren't really feeling me, bro. I could tell like, Oh, who's this fucking yeah. guy and whoop de whoop. And, and I'm the least one to be that kind of a guy where you got to be weird around me. You know what I mean? Be yourself. And they, they would, 
you know, a lot of my friends from back in the day when they found out I was what I was that, you know, that were considerably older than me and whatever, you know, their attitudes toward me changed. They're like, oh, man, is this motherfucker going to be doop de doop <laughs> You know? Check this like, out, though, Rojo. The same so, guy. Um, so people would come in there, and I may have heard about them a little bit. You know what I'm saying? They may know someone. And so they get, I get, you know, they hear my name. They go, oh, they give me a paper. Hey, I heard about you. Woo, 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 right? I don't say nothing. Then when they actually see me, they wouldn't think, like, that's Flacco? Because I was like a 24-year-old kid at that time, bro. Yeah. Baby face and all, but I had a little fucking whip like that shit. You know what I mean? And so people always had a different type of, uh, what do you call, um, you know, when you have a reputation, you know what I'm saying, for, for you know, being authority here or pulling this person as a bro, this now your name gets out there after a while, especially when you're out there in the streets and you're doing things as well. So people would hear my name, but they never met me. And then when they would actually meet me, they would always tell me, you, you don't look like what we expected. Yeah. Hey, I was talking to one of my boys just, you know, maybe an hour ago from Dakota that uh, I actually pulled as a bro back in the day, right? And uh, he was telling me when I ran into him on the streets, I went down to Dakota and uh, I was kicking it with him and like two other Vatos from out there. And he was telling me after I left that they were trying to convince him that there was no way that I could be an NF member and this and that, and that he shouldn't be listening to me. He's going to get himself in a wreck. And because, you know, I didn't fit the the stereotypical image being young, no big ass that's whip, white as shit. You know, as a kid, that's what I thought too, though, bro. Like, because we don't know any better. We just, yeah. you know, we see pictures of, of the homeboys on death row that were going to court. They all had fucking whips like that. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or you go to Victor Outreach and you see these OGs preaching the Bible. They all have butterflies and all these tats. And you start to think, oh, they're still looking at, look, you think that's what they're going to look like. Right. And then when I started meeting individuals, no tattoos, glasses, straight killers, though, man. Yeah. You know? What is a perfect example? He didn't have no tattoos, really. Hey, you would never know in a million years the 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 things he's done if you just met him. You know, you were talking to him business. with that business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, man, he hey, a lot of a lot of things too, man. When I was in the bay, I went to the bay one time when they were first working on pulling me. Two youngsters before I really even talked to Tibbs in D.C., they had two youngsters feel us out. You know what I mean? They were just a couple years older than yeah. me. I was like 20. They were like 23, maybe 24. And, and even me and Porky, we were like, man, should we even talk to these dudes? They got to be dropouts or something. They're not supposed to be saying them letters in their mouth. You know what I mean? We had yeah, no man. idea that they, they were already, you know, they had already been in there for like a year. We, we just looked at them as, we thought it was real weird that they were saying as much as they were saying, because we're always taught, you don't talk about it. Whoop, whoop. They're saying all this stuff. And we're just like, man, we almost just cut them off from conversation. But Porky's like, hey, let's let's see what we can work them for. You know what I mean? And then Tibbs came up to the cell and we're like, oh, I guess they are legit. We thought they were some DOs trying to do some mind games. You know what I'm saying? But that's that same that that's because we stereotyped them, just like people have done me and you over the years. Like, man, those dudes are young. That dude's 21. He's not NF. Man, you know, I, 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 somebody. I've had dudes in the comments do this, right? They've been like, oh, fucking white boys, why are you guys speaking on it? I said, you know what I told a couple people? I go, I dare you to speak about Joe Morgan in that way. I dare you to speak about Weddle Shire in that way. I dare you to speak about Bubs that way. If you acted, you ain't going to speak about none of those individuals. So don't judge us on our past, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's dudes, that, you know what I mean, of all different uh, racial backgrounds that have been part of these groups that are very treacherous individuals or very impactful individuals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's never been about race when you, when you align with one of these groups. It's been about core beliefs. No doubt. But, uh, yeah, for the most part, man, we agree with uh, Gunner's video. He did a great job, outstanding work, Gun. Um, but I don't think it's going nowhere. Do I okay, see so it? Do you see it regaining momentum? Okay, look, it's not going. It's not. Look, the movement's changed. It's the best way to look at it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's no There's no real struggle. The only struggle you have is with the administrations. That's it. But according to everybody else, they're having luxuries. You, what, what else you want? Do you want to build a pool there? You want to have a volleyball court? What do you? What else you want? They have so much privilege and incentives there, man. That is, you know what I mean? And access to things that they're not supposed to have. So fuck it, they ain't got it that bad. No, not at all. Compared to how we had it. Yeah, exactly. Dude. And, and, and you don't have to worry about the only people you have to worry about is their own fucking kind. Hey, somebody told me that there's a few. Hey, somebody told me that there's a few big homies, man, on level ones. And in fire camps right now, even fully made that, homies that are in good standing. You know what I mean? So it's like they're being used to bring in the dope. You can't, you can't, 
you can't compare this era to ours because, man, we went to Pelican Bay or Corcoran. That was it. No cell phones, no no drugs, really. Every once in a while, somebody might hit. You know what I mean? There was no... There was no hustle. All your hustle came from the streets. You weren't you weren't able to be self sufficient in there at all. It's a different era, man. People are different, and it's gonna you know the next the next generation. You know we 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 clown on this generation a little bit, but the generation before us clowned on us too. So it's not personal. But the next generation, these youngsters right now, they're gonna be like, man, what's wrong with these kids when they're our age? It's gonna it's it's just how it goes, bro. And it's just different. It's different. The struggle's not going nowhere. I don't think it's going to get back to where it's gaining people instead of losing them, but it's always going to be around. It's my opinion only. Yeah. Hey, boy, boy, Rojo. Boy, Flocko. That's big flocks. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let us know what you think in your comments for you guys who've been there and done that. And we'll be back at you. Have a good Friday. Enjoy your weekends. Be safe.